Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Today we're going to talk about character creation in the Dune role-playing game, a.k.a. Adventures in the Imperium. And I love this game. I've done a, just a tiny little bit for it. Uh, tomorrow I have an official session that I'm going to run with everybody showing up with characters already made. I'm really super ridiculously excited for that. I've done a ton of prep. So let's dive in. First off, what's unusual about Dune is that you, you make a house as a character. So the group has a character which is the house that they're from. So there's actually a character creation for creating houses. And that's the topic of another video. So let's just see if I can get into that section. So this is all background. About a third of the book is background. And then the next chapter, chapter three, is creating a house. And inside your house, you have roles. Uh, let's see here. So the roles could be, for here it is, roles. Now this has to do with actually making your character because you're going to have one of these as a as a thing you do in the house. Like, why are, what, what do you do in the house? There's ruler, consort, uh, scholar, envoy, advisor, marshal, treasurer. However, these are not like classes. So if you pick one of these, it's more of like a character background type of thing. It doesn't give you any powers. It just is a thing. It's like, it's like a keyword, uh, as I'll explain later. So now you get to chapter four, creating your character. And... Uh, you might think this is where you're going to start, but it's actually not. This is page 101, and you really want to start in page 109, which is a little farther up. And there's a reason they did it like this. 109 is planned character creation, where you make your whole character and then you start playing. And the reason why you have to have this introduction and then this is because there's another type of character creation, which is called creation in play, where you say you create like a third of a character and then you decide as you go along and you're actually playing what their deal is, which I think is a great idea. But for somebody coming from a traditional role playing game and into Dune, you might get a little confused by why they set it up this way. So this thing here, this is what you want. This actually explains to you how to make a character. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over this and show you what the deal is with it. So um, first off, you have what are called traits. And these are really important in the game because traits determine if something is possible or impossible, or if it's going to be easier or harder. And traits are a lot like keywords. So, for example, my name is Baron Sean of House Whatever's the Bold and Adventurous. And so with those keywords, that sort of explains what it is that you can do and what your deal is. So if you were the janitor, you couldn't just jump on a moving spice rig and start hand-hand combat it would be outside of what your keywords are that you could actually do. And by the way, this is very much a storytelling game. There's not a lot of crunch. There's not a lot of tactics. There's not a lot of hard rules. But there's a lot of very interesting mechanisms to tell a story, which is why I'm really loving it. So we're back at 103. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have to jump around a little bit. So the real character creation is 109. Step one is your concept. Consider your character idea. So that's like background. And doesn't have anything, there's no mechanics to it. Select a faction template, if applicable, and record its traits if you do. Okay, so here's the deal. When you're making your character, you have an option to have a faction. And the factions are limited. There's only five. There's Benny Gesserit, Fremen, Mentat, Spacing Guild Agent, and Sook Doctor. So if you pick these, all it does is it sort of locks you in to certain uh, skills and stuff that you 
some that you have to have, and some that are recommended. So it narrows down your choices just a little bit. You can't just choose everything uh, once you've ch if you decide you want to choose one of these factions. Now, it does give you an advantage. It gives you an additional trait. So literally what it is, your additional trait would be Mentat. So you would get another one. So you would be advisor to house whatever's Mentat. Uh, the intelligent and compassionate, like that. So, with that, so that's a little confusing. The, these factions are not like classes. And so, step two, archetype. Choose or adapt an archetype from the list. Record its trait. This is classes. This is like choosing your class. And it's this list here. Let me, let me zoom in because it's really interesting. First off, there are five skills that you have. And it's a lot like 5th edition where your ability scores give you the skills. Like, you're, it's just, it's a, uh, athletics is a strength role. So, you have primary skill and secondary skill. And you guessed it, there are 20 of these that have every possible combination front and back of the five different skills. So, uh, so you would pick one of these. Scholar, Scout, Spice. There's a lot of S's on here for some reason. Tactician, Commander, Analyst. And that is, that is your archetype. And it explains them. The archetypes are then divided a whole page each to where your primary skill is. So your, if your primary skill for your archetype is Battle and there's four of them out of the 20, it, then you are a war master, is the, these four archetypes. So there's war masters, four different archetypes, duelist, tactician, sergeant, and warrior. There's socialites, again, with four. And you have disciples, adepts, and academics. And as you can tell, not a lot of combat stuff in here. Like, you can live or die... <laughs> like, you're falsely accused, you lost at the trial, you're executed. Uh, would be sort of a very simplistic way of dying within one of these other types of aspect to the game. And anybody that loves Dune, the background, the books or whatever, you really you already know what you're getting into. There's a lot of action, and in my game there definitely will be. But there's a lot of other things going on. And a lot of politics. So, that's step two is your archetype. Step three is skills. Assign a rating to each skill. So, let's go ahead and jump back here to these pre-made characters. This is what a character sheet looks like. So, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on skills. Go ahead. And by the way, to my OCD friends, I say I'm very sorry. Everything is crooked with this. I have to get, like, behind the tripod. Okay, so there's your skills. And it's and it's very general. And you ha you pick. Um, oh my gosh, is this? Hold on, I better I better look this up so I don't misinform you. But anyway, there's skills. There's five different skills, and there are focuses. And focuses are like specific things that you can do inside of that generality. And as you can see, this person there's traits, and talents, and assets. And that is, bit, that is basically your character. It's very simple and quick to make a character in this system. So this is page 280. The, yeah, so there's like a zillion characters back here. A zillion. Twenty. Uh, let's go back to page 109. So step three is the primary skill listed for your archetype is rated at six. And then the secondary skill listed for your archetype is rated at five. So, for example, if you picked page 113, if you picked Spy, your primary skill would be Understand, your secondary skill would be Move. So you would get a 6 and a 5 in those. And then the other ones are 4s. 4 is the minimum rating for all these attributes. It goes 4 to 8. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you have 5 more points to place among your skills to a maximum of 8. Frankly, I, I, don't, I don't know what the point is because... 
This just means that you can basically make whatever into whatever. And so you can, based on this system, you can make, uh, you could have, if you wanted a min max, you can make two things in eight, and then everything else would be the minimum of four. And then you get kind of in between that by doing it different ways. Uh, add five more points. So that's step three, done. Step four, focuses. Choose four focuses and assign them to skills. At least one should be assigned to your primary skill. Your archetype will offer suggestions you may take if you wish. They're just suggestions. So if I were a smuggler, for example, it says focuses, and again, these are just recommended, are pilot and unobtrusive. Unobtrusive is like stealth, by the way. So you go and you get, you get your four focuses. And it gives you a page number, 103. So this is kind of in the preliminaries of character creation. So here are a bunch of them. And these are just examples. And by the way, you can make it up. You can make up whatever your skill is. You can just, so uh, let's take a look at some of the battle focuses a little more closely. Yeah, I know this video isn't super pro. Uh, yeah, there you go. So dueling, evasive action, shield fighting, short blades, sneak attacks, strategy, tactics, unarmed combat, blah, blah, blah. So basically, whenever you're doing a focus, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to explain the significance of this. So normally, anytime you make a roll, you get 2d20. And so let's say, so I'll tell you why those focuses are important. So here's my character, Spy Infiltrator. Yeah, there you go. And so let's say I, wanna, I want to uh, sneak around. Let's say I got Unobtrusive, which I think is a move skill. So it would say Unobtrusive, and then it's a move skill 5. So that would mean I would get two dice and I would have to roll a five or under to get one success. And normally you only need one success. And however, because I had a focus in that, every time I rolled a five or under, it wouldn't just be one success, it would be double. It would count as what's called a critical. So I would crit. So if you're using one of your focuses, you crit if you get equal to or under that number. Now, if you have, as a a really cool part of this game system, drives are like why your character does what they do. And if you have a drive associated with the, the skill that you're using or whatever it is you're trying to actually do, then, so if your drive is, I want to uh, kill this other house, uh, then, and you were doing that, like you're trying to sneak in to do whatevers, uh, you would add this to your skill. So you would have, so if he had, the drive was justice five and move five, he'd need a 10 or less to get a success. And every five or less would be a critical, would be two successes. So you can't just roll, you can't just be like, oh, I make a stealth roll. You gotta, you gotta figure out why you're doing it, which is an interesting aspect of Dune. And and really just a bonus, because if you just get rid of this, then you just, you just have your skills. And there's different ways. You can roll additional dice with momentum. Um, you can have re-rolls based on talents that you have to re-roll certain types of things and whatever. But, okay, back to character creation. So uh, 109 is your critical... That's the page that you want. Like, this explains how to make your character. All right, so now we've done our focuses. Now we do talents. Each archetype suggests one talent. Faction characters must pick all mandatory talents, but otherwise have free choice for any remaining picks. So you, oh, and you choose three talents. So talents are like, kind of like powers or feats, I guess, from other systems. And uh, there's, a, there's a whole list of talents back here. If I can uh, find them. Yeah, talents. So there you go. And uh, there's, oh, no. Oh, yeah, here you go. A whole section on talents. And these are really super important. These are going to give you a lot. And what I love about this is as you get advancement points, kind of like experience points, you'll get like four to ten advancement points per session. And to advance something costs between four and 15 advancement points. So every session, you if you played really well, you could be improving something about your character. It's really cool. I love the advancement system in this. Okay, talents. 
We did that. Step six, drives and drive statements. So I kind of already explained that. So for your drives, you have the numbers eight, seven, six, five, and four to allocate. And then that's it. They, they don't change. So it's really interesting because you're defining what really is important to your character and what your character is all about with your drives. And this doesn't become just sort of some sort of froofy game background that's just a role play opportunity. It actually adds to the, all sorts of the roles that you're making. Like to get those drives into your roles, it's really important. And so, but you get to pick your drives. You literally like come up like in uh, English class, you get to pick it. Oh, I'm running out of battery, geez. All right, well, we're almost done. So you uh, make, uh, th for the three highest ones, you make drive statements. Like, you know, I want to find out the truth of my existence. I, I don't know, stuff like that. So anyway, step seven is assets. So basically you get three pieces of equipment, or, but it could also be contacts, it could be blackmail stuff, it could be all sorts, any sort of assets, physical or non-physical. And by the way, this is gonna cut out any second. Um, so choose your assets character carefully. Now, if you find uh, a gun on the ground, you can pick that up and still use it, but it only lasts for that scene. So if you want something to persist, it's kind of like Iron Man's suit. Like, he's always got that suit somehow. How is that? Well, that's part of his character. It's an asset. And like Thor's hammer. I know I'm using comic book character references, but that's basically how it is. You can't get rid of that hammer. And so assets can, you can change the story of your character and get different assets. Uh, you can acquire them, but they're only temporary unless you've actually purchased them and made them an official part of your character. Step eight, finishing touches. So uh, that's traits. You have an ambition. Ambitions do matter, like something that you really, that you really want to achieve. And then a uh, little bit more background. So that is Dune character creation. It's really awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's really quick. It takes 20 or 30 minutes, including a lot of talking, to sort out what the deal with your character is, to make a new character. It's actually the fastest, least crunchy system that I've ever done before, and I think it's really cool. All right, thanks for tuning in.